My dream job would probably have to be boss of my own business eventually. Making furniture, more creative sort of out there style, just something a bit different. More hands on and more thinking put to it. Seeing it all come to life from your picture that you've come up with, the, to sewing it, to constructing it. You've got to be a hard worker. Mm. Dedicated, and, yeah. like if just completely dedicated. If you love it, then you'll get through. Yeah, passion. Yep. Well, I enjoy spray painting, always have, and you got to have a pretty creative mind if you're doing custom work. I think I have a creative mind. <laughs> Dream job is like um, being a manager of the restaurant. Just making people happy and that'd be great I think. That's where my happiness come from. I sort of always wanted to be a tradie. It's, it's just, I, I want to work in the sun. I want to work with my hands. Good bricklayer will make it look easy. Not necessarily me, yet. Everyone likes to put in. The more you put in, the more you get out. Everyone's taught that. It's, it's taught to you by staff as well, that the more you put in, the more you get out. Because I was in a completely different industry when I was back overseas, I was in the medicine. I wanted to see myself in a position that I'd never done anything like this before. And from each hairdresser, each teacher, their own tips, and then you're finding yourself what is easier for you, and I just, I think it's a great opportunity. I think what you need to do is really appreciate the product. You think it's just a whole bunch of flowers, but there are, there are techniques you use to be able to create that form. You don't need any skills to start off with, but you will leave with a lot of skills. It's a job that I've really enjoyed doing to be able to come here and study it and to be able to get qualified in it just helps me to you know be able to reach that goal and just you know helps helps me to get where I want to be. In 1887, the foundation stone was laid for the Gordon's first building. Construction growth in Geelong drove the need for construction skills and trade subjects began in 1891. The town of Geelong officially became a city at the end of 1910. The Gordon's Wool School was established to expand the courses provided to this industry. The Faculty of Engineering was established in 1915 and by 1918 the Gordon offered associate diplomas. Early dressmaking classes were trade orientated and were designed to teach the skills needed by businesses such as Bright and Hitchcock's, who employed large numbers of women to keep Geelong up to date in fashion. The art building was completed in 1909 and housed drawing classes, which were considered the writing of industry. In 1914, Australia joined World War I. 
With German submarines strangling shipping traffic to Australia, there was a surge in demand for locally made goods, equipment and machinery. So skilled ex gordon students were in high demand. Wool still accounted for the majority of Australia's exports and the demand for graduates of the Gordons Wool School remained strong and in 1920 the school accepted its first international students. The annual Wool Ball, which was a major social event in Geelong, was organised by the Wool students from 1929 to 1964. While many of the new courses were construction related, art and dressmaking continued and commercial subjects such as typewriting were taught from the mid-1920s. Nine of the 39 staff in 1925 were women. Sporting endeavours were encouraged and the Gordon hosted the first combined technical school sports meeting in 1920 and an annual athletics day from 1925. In October 29, Wall Street collapsed and the Great Depression began. During the Depression, the Gordon found ways to help students who could not pay their fees, graduates who could not find jobs and children who arrived hungry at school. By the 30s, the Gordon was seen as the key centre for training wool buyers for the large Japanese wool houses. In Geelong, a post-war manufacturing boom saw Shell and Alcoa joining Ford and International Harvester as key Geelong employers. Geelong's population grew from around 40,000 in the mid-30s to over 72,000 by 54. Domestic economy classes began in 1939. The principal, Roy Pavia, saw the course as a means for supplying women training for careers in vocations particularly suitable for young women, diverting them from other occupations which might be reasonably filled with young men. The Textile College building was completed in 45 and was officially opened in 51. The pathway to a diploma then degree was under constant development. From 48, holders of the Gordon's Diplomas of Architecture and Engineering were admitted to the fourth year of the University of Melbourne's degree courses. From 34 to 54, the Gordon student numbers increased from around 1,300 to 3,200 and staff numbers more than tripled. International students increased from 10% to 30% of students over the 50s and 60s. Overall, the 1950s saw a worldwide economic recovery. Sport and culture were considered important parts of student development during the period and the Gordon Gaieties began in 1956. While social activities were supported, discipline was strict. The view was that diploma students were being trained for professional careers and should learn to look and act like professionals. Ties and sports coats were worn by men, dresses and skirts by women. A whole generation, the baby boomers, came of age without experiencing the traumatic effects of worldwide depression or war. In 69, Rip Curl was started and in 73, the Rip Curl Pro at Bells Beach became Australia's first professional surfing event. From 73, both the manufacturing and rural sectors, which impacted heavily on Geelong, experienced substantial declines in employment levels. Geelong's woolen mills closed and hectares of warehouse space in the city centre were left empty after wool handling practices were modernised. Hairdressing was introduced in 73 and the food department was re-established in 74 to teach cooking for Victorian country apprentices. Dressmaking was also renamed to fashion. New technology began to make an impact and the Gordon was an early adopter. An ICL 1901A computer was installed in 68, which had a memory of approximately 64 kilobytes, compared with the minimum memory in an iPhone or iPad of 16 gigabytes today. Student life was more relaxed during this period, with elements of political activism. This period was considered a golden era for wacky student activities and pranks, including Guinness Book of Records type events like bed stacks, Mini Cooper crams and phone box crushes. A music concert at Warren Ponds in 71 was covered by the Geelong Advertiser as Gordon Has a Happening. During the peak of the protests against Australia's involvement in Vietnam, Students from the Gordon agreed to back draft resistors, staged protests over proposed fee increases and demonstrated in support of overseas victims of political restraint. Geelong began to recover from the mid-80s with the growth in newer industries such as retail, tourism, health and research and education, with the continued growth of Deakin University and the Gordon. In the 80s, cookery and hospitality students began serving meals to the public in the remodelled Davidson restaurant. Total enrolments more than doubled over this period, 
from 5,512 in 1978 to 13,510 in 1992. Women made up 45% of the total student body. The Gordon continued to embrace new technology. The pedestrian bridge over the railway linking the Fenwick Street and the Trobe Terrace buildings was finally constructed in 83. In the 90s, mobile phones were seen on campus and the Gordon invested in one of the first portable computers. The Gordon continued to respond to the needs of the region throughout the 1990s. Growth in domestic housing construction resumed in Geelong in the late 90s and building apprenticeships hit record numbers in 99. As manufacturing continued to decline, Geelong's investment in health, education, hospitality and tourism meant it was no longer dependent on one industry. In 2010, there were more than 1,300 RTOs in Victoria and more than 170 in Geelong. Bowen Health and Deakin University became the largest employers in the region. The Gordon grew during the decade through diversification. Courses were offered for study on campus, off campus, full time, part time, online, in business and in industry. The number of students increased from 15,000 to nearly 20,000. In 2010, the Gordon was named Victorian Training Provider of the Year. The Gordon's focus continued to be on creating pathways and partnerships with a range of institutions that offered degree programs. In 2011, 43 of the Gordon's advanced qualifications articulated into 68 degree programs. Today, the Gordon is Victoria's largest regional standalone TAFE who pride themselves on delivering quality vocational education and training. Celebrate with us, 125 years of leading and learning.